Grace and peace to you. It's Friday, January 29th. We continue with one candle, the light of Christ among us. The same God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shone in our hearts to give us the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Welcome to this time of prayer. My name is Kay Huggins, and I'm the Parish Associate at Second Presbyterian Church in Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's my pleasure to share this time with you, my friends from Second Presbyterian, but also with you, friends in Christ, whose names I may not know. This is a circle of prayer that joins us together throughout the day. We come together to pray, to praise, and to reflect on God's Word. Thank you for joining us because your prayers enrich our service. If you're new to our practice, please read the weekly welcome. But really, all you need to know is this. The world is in desperate need of prayer. And so we begin each day with a prayer based on a psalm on the psalm of the day, and our psalm today is 106, verses 1 through 27. The refrain is, Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let us pray. Bless your people with strength and courage that we may walk in your ways and share your love with all we encounter. Remind us of your love that never fails and always presses towards the blessings of peace, justice, and eternal communion through Jesus Christ. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Now after the miracle of the loaves and fishes, Jesus sends his disciples on their way out on the sea at night. He goes up on the mountain to pray. But the story doesn't end there. This will be a night of another miraculous event. Listen, I'm reading from Mark 6 verses 45 through 56. Right then, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go ahead of them to the other side of the lake toward Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowd. And after saying goodbye to them, Jesus went up on the mountain to pray. Evening came, and the boat was in the middle of the lake, but he, Jesus, was alone on the land. He saw his disciples struggling. They were trying to row forward, but the wind was blowing against them. Then very early in the morning, he came to them, walking on the water. He intended to pass them by, but when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost, and they screamed. Seeing he, him was terrifying to all of them. Just then Jesus spoke to them, Be encouraged. It's me. Don't be afraid. And he got into the boat. The wind settled down. His disciples were so baffled, they were beside themselves. That's because they hadn't understood about the loaves. Their hearts had been changed so that they resisted God's ways. When Jesus and his disciples had crossed the lake, they landed at Gennariset and anchored the boat and came ashore. People immediately recognized Jesus and ran around that whole region bringing sick people on their mats to wherever they heard he was. Wherever he went, villages, cities, farming communities, they would place the sick in the marketplaces and beg him to allow them to touch even the hem of his clothing. And everyone who touched him was healed. Now the point of the first miracle, the walking on the water, 
is exposed in the last line of that pericope. Their hearts had been changed so that they resisted God. Now, when did that happen? The clue is also there. They hadn't understood about the lows. They didn't understand that wherever Jesus was, whatever Jesus was doing, God was there and doing it as well. Jesus had sent them out onto the sea at night. Now the disciples, some of whom were fishermen, understood what was and was not possible at night on the sea. Yet later, Jesus would see them struggling, trying to row against a strong headwind. I wonder, I wonder what was in Jesus' mind then. I imagine it was something like, relax, don't fight the elements. There's no danger, I'm here, remember? Jesus knew that God was with his disciples, always. He had confidence in God's care of them, always, even when they were struggling to master a strong headwind. Later, as morning light worked its daily miracle on the lake, Jesus came walking by. He had planned to walk on, but when he realized that his steps upon the sea terrified his disciples, he turned aside to encourage them and to chase away their fears. But after a night of battling the elements, their hearts were changed. That's how easy it is to forget to whom you belong. Jesus' disciples became baffled because they forgot Jesus was with them. That's how they resisted God's ways, by assuming they were on their own instead of as Jesus' beloved ones. They were always accompanied by him. That's a story to make us pray that we may never forget and always remember to whom we belong on this day and on every day. But now it's time to say our prayers. Our prayers for Friday begin with the prayers of the day. Let us pray. Satisfy us with your love in the morning and we will live this day in joy and praise. Eternal God, we praise you for your mighty love given in Christ's sacrifice on the cross and the new life we have received by his resurrection. Especially we thank you for ministries of teaching and pastoral care, for those who work to help and to heal, for the many sacrifices others have made for our benefit for opportunities for our generous giving and for the presence of Christ in our weakness and suffering. God of grace, let our concern for others reflect Christ's self-giving love, not only in our prayers, but also in our practice. Especially we pray this day for the church in Latin America, for a right relationship between humans and the earth, for those who are wounded and those who face death this day. For those who keep watch over the sick and the dying. And for reverence for the gift of life you offer. Loving God, your light shines into our days, illuminating your presence in the world and throughout the night. By celestial light, we rest secure in your care. Keep us mindful of the graces necessary for times of turmoil, the grace of patience, the grace of friendship, the grace of silence, the grace of forgiveness. Hear now the prayers from our community's joys and sorrows. We pray with those whose illnesses and limitations are recent and those experiencing long-standing health issues. For Pat's grandson, Colton, and Jane and Don's son and two grandsons, all recovering from COVID. 
for Sandra's new diagnosis and treatments for spinal stenosis, for Richard's cancer treatments continuing, for Martha and Lorraine who tumbled while dealing with Dozier the dog, for Bev's sister Jeanette who was recently hospitalized, for Ruth as she continues her treatment regime, for Toby awaiting tests, for Tina's dear friend Paula with an aggressive cancer, and for Carmen, John, and Gabe, for Rick and Marie, for Victor and his son Keith, for Lena, blessed with healing and endurance, all according to their needs. We pray for the many who are mourning, particularly the sudden deaths shared with us, Jim's friend Steve, who died of COVID, Jim's Aunt Joanne, whose son died unexpectedly at home at the age of 49. For Elizabeth, friends in North Carolina, faced with mourning a mother, a wife, suicide. For Al S.'s Manal friends, John and Irene, whose 28-year-old daughter died of an aneurysm. And for the many across our state, nation, and around the world, grieving because of dearly beloved ones lost to COVID. Grant daily comfort, send companions for their grief, wipe away their tears as each discovers a new way forward into life abundant and eternal. We thank you for the service and witness of so, so many essential workers and ask your blessing to rest upon them all and especially on medical workers and volunteers st facilitating state vaccination programs, caring for the hospital, staffing clinics and residential care facilities, keeping our neighbors safe and healthy. Especially we pray for those we know and love, Carla, Nicole, Cassie, Sandra, Camilla, Feliz, Tilda, Karina, Emiko, Pat's daughter, Toby, together with her husband, Boyd, Pat's brother, Arthur, who, as Sandra's cousins, Melinda and Marshall, are working directly with COVID patients. Bless them, one and all. And now, with the confidence born of the love of Christ, we pray as we have been taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Like good stewards of the grace of God, let us serve one another with whatever gifts we have received. Let the people say, Amen. Bless the Lord. Let the people say, the Lord's name be praised. And now throughout this weekend, spend some time pondering those miracles, the providence that is given through them, the encouragement, the upward heavenly look, and the reminder that as you belong to Christ, you are with him always and Christ is always with you. Remember the refrain from Psalm 106, give thanks to the Lord our God, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. And until we pray, keep in mind those words from Paul to the church at Corinth. Stay awake, stand firm in your faith, be brave, be strong. Everything should be done in love.